Stampin' Storage presents Crafted Spaces. In this exclusive video series, we will take you inside beautiful studios from across the United States. First, you'll get expert advice for improving your craft area and designing your own dream studio. Later in the series, we'll take you on guided tours of the rooms we visited that were definitely crafted spaces. Keisha Charles lives in an Atlanta suburb and has turned her paper crafting passion into a small business. The paper mint is her way of sharing her craft with others. After crafting on my own and for myself and for friends and family for years, I decided to venture into doing it for other people, people that I didn't know. I wanted to be able to share my crafts with others. Um, I got a lot of compliments on the things that I did make and um, creating the paper mint, which is the kind of business manifestation of my crafting efforts, I'm able to share my crafts with other people. Specifically, I like to do um, wedding invitations and all the, the stationery that comes with a wedding from the save the date right through to the thank you cards. In addition to that, I focus on baby announcements, birthday um, birthday parties, um, any kind of celebration, that is where the paper mint comes in. It's beautiful paper to celebrate life's special moments. My old studio is a 13 by 13 room, and yes, I counted every foot in that room because I used every foot of it. Um, that's a spare bedroom on the main floor of our house. Um, it started out as my office, and as I got into paper crafting heavily in 2006, 2007, it evolved into my craft room. And the idea for this space really came from my husband. I had a lot of thoughts about how I could improve my little 13 by 13 room. Um, and we, we did a pretty good job of setting it up and utilizing that space too. It's, it's the best of our ability. But my husband realized that my craft had grown way beyond what that room could accommodate. And with him also wanting to help me with the business aspect of um, kind of giving birth to the paper mint, we wanted to dedicate a space large enough and that was planned for use as, as a crafting space and as a business space. The biggest worry to me, um, in addition to the fact that my space was becoming very crowded, is that my crafting items began to bleed into other rooms in the house. The coat closet was entirely full of paper. Um, there was a little section in the dining room that housed some of my current projects and carts. Um, there's a, in the spare bedroom upstairs was filled with my stamps and all kinds of um, surplus paper that I, that I desperately needed, but didn't have you know, adequate space to store them in my 13 by 13 room. So um, that, that was one of the biggest drivers for wanting to create this space. Keisha and her husband recently finished the basement of their suburban Atlanta home, and the renovation included her beautiful craft studio. The walkout basement provides a door at the side of their home and easy access for Keisha's clients. In addition, the two large windows bring in lots of natural light to brighten the space. Keisha spent countless hours planning all the details of her craft room, from the ceiling to the flooring. It's a beautiful and functional space for individual crafting, as well as hosting classes or clients. Let's join Keisha as she takes us on a guided tour of her studio. This huge bookcase is a main storage area in the craft room. It houses a ton of stuff. Um, over here in the far right are stamps and dies and embossing folders. Um, you'll see these green little tubs throughout the unit. Um, with nice little labels, labels telling you what's inside them. We won't go through all of that because there are a lot of these little boxes. Um, moving further over towards the left, you've got more stamps and dies in these lovely hard cases organized by the different companies that provide these stamps and dies to me. So this section houses my stamping up stamps from the current catalog and above are additional stamps and dies in the hard cases from other companies that I like. On the far left over here is my little Anna Griffin world. All things Anna Griffin in this section, paper and embellishments, and some of her tools. 
So moving from open shelving to closed, the closed units at the bottom, the, these file cabinets store different paper collections and their accompanying embellishments from other companies that I, I like. Um, this one's Graphic 45. And they're all stored by collection in these handy little clear envelopes so you can see what's going on and know what you have. And then when you don't want it, just tuck it away. One of the happiest places in the craft room is this enormous unit here. It houses my eight and a half by 11 and my 12 by 12 papers, but also has room in the middle section for inks, markers, and refills. Flanking the left and right sides and nice little um, cubby sized drawers with all the other crafting goodies that you love to have on hand. This one houses embossing um, powders. Um, moving through this unit, you've got uh, paper on top and on bottom, inks in, inks in the middle. And on the left side over here, you have more inks because I can never have enough ink if you're a stamper. And in here are my favorite Tsukimeko dewdrop do inks. Nicely tucked away, useful, handy dandy, oh so inexpensive plastic storage unit. Lining the right side of each of the paper storage cubbies are labels indicating what paper you're taking a look at. This one happens to be Hello Honey. In this middle section, we have three standard size Stampin' Storage ink, hold, ink pad holders with, the cus with a custom unit built around it. Um, it is flush mounted to the front of the unit, which puts the, um, the stamp pads and the matching markers and refills right to hand. The stamp and storage products come unfinished, and the beauty of that is that it allows you to color them in any shade of the rainbow that you desire. For me, white was the right choice to allow the paper to stand out and to blend in with the cabinetry that I had selected for this room. We wanted to use every available surface in the craft room as possible. Here we took the, um, the longest Stampin' Storage ribbon holder and cut it into three pieces. And right now I'm using it to house some buttons that I absolutely love. Continuing along the top of the counter, we have um, markers both below as well as above and some die cutting stuff surrounding it as well as below in these cabinets. And then along the countertop, um, there's a washi tape holder from Stampin' Storage, which is um, very, very neatly displays your washi tape um, for easy access. And over here in this corner, we have two additional pieces from Stampin' Storage. First, the um, blend abilities um, holder. And second, this is the distress combo holder. It houses the actual ink pads the matching refills, and has space for the markers when you get them. In this cabinet, we have um, die cutting and glue machines. So the die cutting machines that use software to cut are on the left, and um, some other of my die cutting machines that use um, die plates are on the right with their appropriate plates. On top are my various glue machines and my um, airbrush. So here's the main desk area as opposed to the island. The desk area is not a crafting space, but it is a huge, another huge storage space. At the bottom, we have these glass drawers through which you can see lots of fun fabric flowers and other three-dimensional flowers for all of your paper crafting needs. And above, you've got buttons, you've got paint, you've got stain, and moving across, we continue the same theme more stain, um, embellishments atop ribbons and trim. And then through this middle section, you've got a ton of different embellishments, appliques, little gems, different types of paint, um, and the tools you need to um, do fun projects with them. A couple of kits that I love, stencils that you can use with the paint, and then Brad World over here with tons of different colors of brads. You can never have too many brads is my Theory. Finally, on the end, you continue with it with more color. Mists, flocking, beads, glitter, sticky glitter, because that's important, and then more paint at the bottom. Finally, the glass drawers on the bottom house a couple of different types of fabric um, that can be handy um, in crafting. 
And then finally, um, I have some felt, which you can also use to make embellishments and in your various crafting projects. And that was a lot. So now it's time for a break at my desk. In this section, these shallow drawers house embellishments. This top one happens to house some of my journaling papers. So they're all tucked in here, nice and accessible for when you need them. Moving along the countertop, sewing box at the ready, looks pretty and very handy. But this section is another favorite place for me. From top to bottom, you've got punch storage. In the very top, kind of what I call my overflow punch storage in these green bins and then additional punches housed um, on these shallow shelves. We've got some flowers here in these glass drawers in the middle section, um, just nice and easy to hand, and some additional fabric is here as well, just folded and on display for your viewing pleasure. At the bottom here is another exciting section of the craft room. Artisan Custom Closets created these custom slide out vertical drawers that house these units created by Stampin' Storage. Um, and they nicely hold all of your lovely flat punches. Um, these ones happen to be from Stampin' Up. So as much custom storage as there is in this room from both Stampin' Storage and custom Artists and Custom Closets, there are things that you can do on your own. For example, in this drawer, I just bought some simple dividers, which luckily happen to match the insides of the drawers, and I simply placed them at um, intervals that were useful to me in this drawer that stores all my bling. So I can keep all of my bling nicely um, organized here and have it at the ready when I need it. So now that you've figured out how to store all of the pretty stuff, your paper, your embellishments, your glitter, your craft room above all must be functional. And one of those functions is to keep it clean and to keep yourself clean. So when you've got ink all over your hands, you get to go to the sink, clean that off at the touch of the hand and switch it off at another touch. I love this sink, I love this faucet, and it's just as important as all the other things that I have in this room. This unit is a truly custom piece by Stampin' Storage, who created it just for this island with the collaboration of Artisan Custom Closets. They stacked the um, ribbon holders one on top of the other in the exact size that would allow it to slide into the island at each end and allow us to store all this beautiful ribbon that can be easily accessed and cut as you need it. So this huge island has an amazing amount of function to its form. Um, the length of the island allows us to create storage on both the left and right side and house a ton of embellishments of different kinds. And continuing further down, you have more tools that you need in the craft room. Not as um, lovely as and pretty as some of the other stuff that you've seen, but very important to every crafter are adhesives of, of every kind. So here I store my different tapes, my different foam, um, my dry adhesives, sticky dots, all kinds of things that attach embellishments and all of your pretty things to paper and help you create the wonderful crafting items that you will share. In the middle section of the island is the station that is designed for, te for teaching class. So we have three stools here where students can sit and listen to me or whoever else as an instructor on the other side. Um, aligned with these three stools are three drawers. These drawers house current projects because as crafters, we often work on more than one thing at a time. Um, in this particular drawer, Here's a project that I still really need to finish. I've housed it in this little um, plastic case. And I'll show you a little, give you a little bit of a preview of what I'm creating. It is a tag book using the Graphic 45 Secret Garden um, papers and embellishments. So here are one of the pages, and they're all loose right now before they're bound. Here's one of the pages in the center you have a tag that's tucked in here very snugly. And when you pull it out, I'm using different flowers, which I'm coloring with Copic. Keisha can spend several weeks working on these large projects. Here we see her picking out a few last items. She enjoys shopping in her own studio for supplies, inks, paper, embellishments, and more. 
She'll bring everything over to her personal work area. The organization here is designed to support her crafting methods. She stores these smaller groups of supplies to keep her counter surface clean. Keisha planned the island around her work style to maximize her efficiency. Let's join her as she begins putting everything in its place. So first I'll stash away my paper. I've got a couple of colors of plain paper over here for this project. I'm just going to add this one to the stash that I'm going to use and tuck that away. Next, I've got ink that I want to get off of the work surface for right now. Um, I've got a bunch of other inks that I've selected for this project, and I'll add that to the ink drawers right here. And there we go. Easy peasy. Let's swing that closed. And it looks like I've, I, I pulled some washi. So I'll add that to this drawer. We've got a nice little slot to drop that in. In this drawer, you have ribbon, washi in the middle, and stickers at the back. Further down, um, keeping with the theme of, of stamping things, um, we have stamp sets that I'm going to use in this project. I created little custom covers for each of these stamp sets that I've put onto the front of the box and wrapped it around. And inside, of course, all your handy dandy stamps. In the front section are my cling stamps. Just a bunch of them dropped in there as needed. Now we, we get to put away the remainder of the stuff. In this very st first drawer, it's all my color. So we slide it out and it holds a custom storage piece that I designed and Brett at Stampin' Storage helped me build. So in the back, I get to slide in my paint. The markers get dropped in over here. And buttons, they're pink, so we can drop them there. Easy access, ready for you whenever you need it. Um, another custom piece is also shown here. In this drawer, we house flowers. So um, loose flowers in the back, flowers and packets in this section, and then some bling right at the very last section over here. Ready for you to use as needed. Just beneath it, we have our dies. These are the dies that I've selected for this project. Just pull them out. The Both the holders as well as the magnetic um, cards are from Stampin' Storage. And these little units fit very nicely into this slot in this drawer with a bigger section at the back for larger, um, larger magnetic cards or dies. Finally, at the very but bottom, what would be dies without something to cut them with? So the puddle bug and all its plates are here. And then you can never have too many stamps, so you've got more stamps at the very end over here. Keisha finds great satisfaction in her paper crafting. Her attention to detail shows both in her intricate projects and in her studio. She loves this space, and all of the effort to plan and execute her beautiful room has paid off. Although it's hard to leave for the day, there's always more time to unleash her creativity tomorrow. So what did you think? Join in the conversation on our social media channels, which are linked here on the screen. If you're new to the series, be sure to watch the previous episodes. Don't forget to subscribe to our blog so you can hear about the new episodes to come. Thank you for watching Crafted Spaces, presented by Stampin' Storage. Stampin' Storage. Organize your craft. Unleash your creativity.